Good morning, and uh, welcome to Peace Through the Word this morning on uh, Tuesday, the 28th of July, 2020. Uh, again, I'm coming to you a little early this morning. I thank you for that privilege. Uh, this is uh, move week for us. Uh, we're moving into a new place up here in Oro Valley, uh, Arizona, uh, a uh, suburb of Tucson. And the moving day is Thursday, so I have a lot of things to uh, get ready for that. And plus, I have a physical therapy appointment as well and a sermon to begin to prepare for and uh, complete as well. So I've got a pretty busy schedule. So coming to you a little early this morning, and I thank you for that. Uh, but I really appreciate the uh, opportunity to be able to share peace through the word with you through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and again, it's so appreciative of everybody chiming in from around the world. We never, ever take that for granted. And uh, so that is most appreciated. Continues to be every day. So brothers and sisters, this morning we're going to be looking at the law. Okay. The law of God. And uh, Dr. Martin Luther is, is going to unpack that for us. He is very uh, astute in being able to do that because... Uh, he was a very much uh, 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 a uh, disciple of the law. You know, he was a, a Roman Catholic monk. And uh, when he saw the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ communicated in the uh, uh, epistle of Romans, it really opened his, his uh, heart and, and mind to, to grace. And uh, so, and that formulated the, the uh, Protestant Reformation. Uh, that has been uh, tremendously affected uh, the, the Christian church. So we're going to be looking at hammered by the law. Uh, do this, don't do that, and all those different things. And so I pray that that's going to not only bring you real peace this morning, but will be a tremendous blessing to you as well. So this morning I'm going to uh, uh, present to you our, our morning service called Matins. Uh, it's it's a uh, worship setting uh, predominantly uh, for the morning, and it was a order of of worship uh, in the in the Christian church, and so uh, we're going to do that this morning. So, brothers and sisters, we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver us. Make haste to help us, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship him. Tremendous accolades to our gracious Lord, and uh, we can never give him enough uh, praise and, and, and worship. We, we, we simply cannot, and he is so much deserving of that. So I pray that's a blessing. Well, brothers and sisters, I want to uh, <laughs> share with you uh, the first reading. It comes from Psalm, the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 1, and uh, 
You know, uh, we are tremendous advocates of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ because salvation is totally by grace alone, through faith alone, by Christ alone, with no contribution from us, um, no, no things that we have to do. Jesus gives us salvation at no cost to us. You know, we don't, we can't bring ourselves to faith through any pious acts that we might think that we're capable of doing because the Bible says we, we, we don't have such capabilities. So it's all grace. However, you know, there is this <clears throat> thought out there that we accentuate grace at the expense of the law, meaning that we don't uh, give proper attention to and or perhaps even respect for the law of God. And maybe in some sense, in some way, maybe there's some validity to that uh, opinion. Maybe, you know, it would have to be examined a little bit. <laughs> but, but there might be some, some validity there to a certain degree. And I, and I qualify that to a certain degree. So, in light of that, allow the words from Psalm chapter 1 to enlighten you, perhaps, and, um, and, and give you perhaps a proper perspective of the law of God, okay? Because it's still important. You know, Jesus says, I did not come to abolish the law. So we got to be careful that we don't, you know, say, hey, you know, <clears throat> the law of God is bad and not applicable. We've got to be very, very careful that we don't come to those kind of conclusions, <laughs> okay? Because we can do that. <laughs> we can most certainly do that. We can take extreme positions here. And like Dr. Martin Luther said, no, the, the, the best road is like in the middle of the road, you know, not going to extreme. So anyway, allow Psalm chapter one to, to uh, minister to you. <clears throat> the psalmist says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. See, that's a proper perspective of God's law, because the law of God has three usages, all right? There is the first usage of the law. It acts as a mirror. It shows us just really who we are, <laughs> sinners, okay? And we need that, all right? So that's the first usage of the law. It acts as a mirror. The second usage of the law, is it acts as a curb, you know? keeps us from maybe going over the edge, you know, getting really crazy, you know. So uh, hopefully the law, you know, reins us in a bit, you know, keeps us from going over the edge, acts as a curb. And then the third usage of the law acts as a guide. It shows us as to how we ought to live out our lives as, as believers in Jesus Christ, okay. So the three usages of the law. And so the psalmist says that the, the, the blessed person is the one who meditates on God's law day and night. All right? So I pray that will be a blessing to you. Now listen to St. Paul's letter to the Christian church at Galatians in Galatians chapter 3. And I'm going to read nine verses, starting in verse 10 through verse 19. And this is the passage that Dr. Martin Luther is going to unpack for us later on. It gives us a, a real good perspective of God's law and how we ought to uh, uh, embrace it and how we ought to respect it and follow it, okay? So listen to these words to the Christian church at Galatia from St. Paul. He says, for all who rely on works of the law are under a curse, uh, did, I got to have a cup of coffee on that one, <laughs> okay? 
He goes, all who rely on the works of the law, the do's and the don'ts, you know, you got to do this, you can't do this, and you know, all that stuff that, that we're familiar with. He says, you're under a curse. For it is written, cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. So, you know, if you're a, a, a person who really wants to adhere to the law of God, you know, you got to do this, you can't do this, you got to make this decision, walk down this aisle and all this other stuff, then, you know, if you fail, if you're insincere or anything like that, you're in trouble. You know, it's a curse, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a real mess. <laughs> okay, so because he says, um, if you don't do all those things in the book of the law, you know, you're cursed. All right. Now, it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law. Why, why does St. Paul say that? It's because we can't keep God's law, okay? And no matter how hard you try, you, you're going to fail. You, you, you know, people say, well, I, 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 can, I can make this decision for Jesus. No, you can't, because your decision is going to be insincere. So you just failed in your decision. <laughs> you know, we, we can't keep God's law. So no one is justified before God by trying to keep his law, because you're going to fail all the time, every time, no matter how hard you try, okay? Um, so he says, the righteous shall live not by the law, but by faith, by faith, all right? But the law is not of faith. The law is not of faith. Um, he says, Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. Now listen to this, brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, that's us, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith, not because we adhere to the law. All right, now listen to what this promise is all about, because there's misunderstandings about that. People think, well, you know, the only, the only ones that can receive the promise of Abraham are the Jews. Mm -mm, not hardly. Okay, so listen to what the promise of, of, God, of God is, the promise given to Abraham who it was for, and for what purpose. It says, To give a human example, brothers, even with a man-made covenant or a promise, no one annuls it or adds to it once it's been ratified. In other words, once that promise has been uh, you know, legalized, uh, nobody can ratify it. Nobody can change it, no matter who you are or what organization you are. Okay? Now, the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, plural, referring to many, but referring to just one, Abraham. Just to Abraham, all right? And to your offspring, singular, not plural, who is Christ. That's Abraham's offspring, Jesus Christ. That's it. All right? It's Jesus Christ, period. It. Singular. All right? This is what I mean. The law which came 430 years afterward, after Abraham, does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God. God promised Abraham 430 years before Jesus came on the scene. Okay? So it doesn't nullify it because it was made 430 years before Jesus arrived. Okay? So as to make the promise void. Okay? For if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by promise. No, because if it comes by the law, it's a result of somebody having to do something. If it comes by a promise, it's just that. I promise to do this based upon the edict given by God to Abraham. God doesn't lie. God always keeps his promise all the time, all right? 
But God gave it to Abraham by a promise. So why then the law? Okay, if it's all because of the promise, then why do we have the law? What, what, what purpose is the law for? What, what purpose is the Ten Commandments? <laughs> you know, there are people today that say, you know, you, you don't have to mess with the Ten Commandments. It's all grace. Ah, uh, got to be careful. Be careful with that. All right? So it's, he answers the question, it was added because of transgressions until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made. And it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now, an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. So who's the intermediary that's being referred to? Jesus. Jesus is the one who kept, keeps the law for us, not us. Okay, Jesus is our intermediary, nobody else. Nobody else, no matter who you might want to think that might be. It's only Jesus. Okay, so now here, listen to how Dr. Martin Luther unpacks this incredible biblical truth. He says, although the law doesn't justify us, it's still useful and necessary, most assuredly. First in society, it holds the lawless people in check. That's what has to happen today in the United States. There's too many of lawless people doing whatever they want to do with no repercussions being enacted. And so guess what? They're just having a field day in Seattle and all kinds, Minneapolis and all kinds of cities, just doing whatever they want to do with no repercussions. There needs to be severe repercussions, and I mean severe so that they understand they do this again, they're going to pay one heck of a high price. And I don't care how hard it hurts. It's supposed to. And it better. And shame on the government entities that have been put in place to make that happen for not getting it done. And we, the voting public, need to vote them out of office. All right? So, anyway, second, it shows each person that he's a sinner guilty of death and worthy of eternal wrath. Why does the hammer of the law smash us to pieces and crush us? It's because it's supposed to. All right? Of what use is this humiliation? It shows us that the way of grace stands open to us. Amen. So the law is a servant and prepares us for grace. For God is the God of the humble, the miserable, the troubled, the oppressed, the despairing, and those who have become totally nothing. See, we have, and that's called contrition. The law is, brings that contrition, that, that honest, uh, genuine um, sadness of our sin to where we are receptive now to the grace of Jesus. Until we have genuine contrition, the gospel is going to have no significance for you. Why? Because you don't think you need it. You need to come to the faith, the fact that you're a sinner, you're damned, you have no good in you in and of yourself in any way, shape, or form in which to save yourself to the point where you cry out for the grace and mercy of God. Then Jesus rushes to you with that tremendous comfort of the gospel. But not until, okay? Not until. You know, there are times when people who are comfortable in their sin Jesus never gives them any kind of grace whatsoever. Never. It's all the law. Bam, 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 bam. No grace. Yet Jesus is all about grace. But if you're comfortable in your sin, if you think, well, I can just do whatever I want to do with no repercussion and no, no repentance, you're not going to get any comfort. I'm not going to give you any grace. I'm going to just nail you with the law. Bam, bam, every time. I'm going to say, you better repent or you're, you're on your way to hell in a heartbeat. And if that offends you, tough. Who cares? It's supposed to. You better be offended. All right? So that's what it means. He lifts the lowly. He feeds the hungry. And he heals the blind. He comforts the miserable and the troubled. And he justifies the sinner. He raises the dead. He saves the despairing and the condemned. And Jesus does all that once contrition is enacted. Okay? For he is the almighty creator who makes everything from nothing. Most of all, he protects us from the most harmful corruption, presuming we're righteous. 
No one wants to be a sinner who is impure, miserable, and condemned. Nobody really, I don't think anybody really wants that. Now, maybe there might be some masochists out there that do, but I don't know of any. But everyone wants to be righteous and holy, okay? So God uses this hammer of the law to break, to crush, and to annihilate this beast with its empty confidence, wisdom, righteousness, and power. As a result, it will learn through its misfortune that it is lost and condemned. When the conscience has been terrified in this way by the law, there's a place for the teaching of the gospel and of grace, which restores and comforts the conscience. And that's beautiful. That's beautiful. This teaching says that Christ came into the world not to break off a damaged cattail, not even to put out a smoking wick, but to deliver good news to humble people, to heal those who are brokenhearted, and to announce that captives will be set free and prisoners released. That's what the law does. It prepares us for grace. Okay, so that that's what I hope that you'll have a proper understanding and perspective of the law of God, all right? That it prepares us for Jesus' grace and mercy, all right? And, I, and as a result of that, you have peace through the word of Jesus. So what a blessing, and I hope that is. So forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and then keep it. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, I love the habitation of your house and where your spirit dwells. Amen. So brothers and sisters, allow me to uh, praise our Lord with the following uh, verses. We praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you, cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabbath, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The Father of an infinite majesty, your adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. <clears throat> when you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had become the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come again to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you and we worship your name forever and ever. Grant, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy on us, have mercy upon us. Let your mercy be upon us as our trust is in you. O Lord, to you we have trusted. Let us never be confounded. Amen. So, O Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Brothers and sisters, together this morning as we begin our day, Let's together pray the wonderful prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. And so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beautiful prayer, amen. It is. All right. 
So, O Lord, hear our prayers. Let our cries come to you. The Lord be with us and with our spirits. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, receive the wonderful blessings of the Lord today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you incredible peace. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for allowing uh, peace, and, peace Through the Word to be a channel for you this morning. Of God's grace and mercy and his genuine peace to you as you begin your day. Uh, again, I really pray that you'll have a phenomenal day today. Pray that you'll go out and enjoy it, even if you're working. Uh, enjoy your work. Enjoy the vocation that God has given you. Uh, because this is the first day of the rest of your life. So go and have fun and enjoy. Until we meet again, uh, it's blue skies and the wheels are up, flaps are retracted. Have a very wonderful and smooth flight today. Amen.